Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to be solving parts A, B, C and D from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics Problem 1.10. This is about how the components of vectors, cross products and scalar triple products transform under translations and inversions of the coordinate system. A translation is shown here and an inversion is shown here. So part A wants us to determine how the components of a vector transform under the translation of the coordinate system. And this is the translation where the x coordinate stays the same, the y coordinate becomes modified slightly by subtracting a constant a and the z coordinate also stays the same. So if we imagine a vector from the point 0, 0, 0, this is on the original coordinate system, to the point 3, 4, 5, then obviously this vector would have components 3 in the x direction plus 4 times the unit vector in the y direction plus 5 times the unit vector in the z direction. Now let's imagine we have the modified coordinate system in which 0, 0, 0 would become 0 minus a, 0, and 3, 4, 5 would become 3, 4 minus a, 5. Now, just taking the difference between each coordinate, we arrive at the exact same vector. 3x hat plus 4y hat plus 5z hat. The difference between minus a and 4 minus a is again 4. So we can conclude that there is no change in the components of a vector under a translation. Part B wants us to determine how the components of a vector transform under an inversion of coordinates, which is the case where the modified x coordinate is simply the negative of the original x coordinate, same for the y and same for the z. So again, we're in 3D space, so let's assume we have a vector ax x hat plus ay y hat plus az z hat. Now, taking a similar example as before, let's go from the origin of the original coordinate system, 0, 0, 0, to the point 1, 2, 3. Now, this would give us the vector 1 x hat plus 2 y hat plus 3 z hat. ax is 1, ay is 2, az is 3. Now, in the new coordinate system, or inverted, the point 0, 0, 0, 
which will just be the origin of these coordinates, is still 0, 0, 0, because the negative of 0 is just 0. The point 1, 2, 3, on the other hand, would be modified so that each coordinate will become the negative of the original. So the point 1, 2, 3 becomes the point minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Now you can see here that the vector we get going from this point to this point is minus 1 x hat minus 2 y hat minus 3 z hat. Now in part b we derive the result that under an inversion the vector a becomes the vector minus a and as would be true for a similar vector b. Now part c wants us to determine how the cross product changes under an inver inversion. So the cross product usually a cross b is equal to another vector which we'll call c. And this is the original coordinate system with no inversion. Now under an inversion we have minus a crossed with minus b. Now Instead of just stating what this is equal to, I want to prove it in a similar way to how we've calculated cross products before. So I'll solve it using the determinant. So we have we set up a determinant like this. Where at the top we have x hat, the unit vector in the x direction, y hat, and z hat. Now, now, we need the components of the vector minus a, which are simply minus ax, minus ay, minus az. Similarly, we have minus bx, minus by, minus bz. Now, we usually calculate determinants like this. So we have the x component, and then we have minus ay times minus bz, which is just ay bz. Then we have minus minus az times minus by, which is just minus az times b y and we have a minus y hat minus ax times minus bz which is ax bz minus az no, minus minus az times minus bx which is just minus az bx plus z hat minus ax times minus by which is ax by subtracting minus ay times minus bx which is just minus ay bx now this is exactly the same result as we would get if we just crossed the normal vector a with the normal vector b. So I'll write that explicitly here. We have minus a cross
crossed with minus b is simply equal to a cross b. So we've just shown that in a similar way to ordinary multiplication, where the minus signs cancel out, minus a cross minus b is equal to a cross b. So the result here, which I've called c, doesn't change its sign, even if we have an inversion of coordinates. So we showed before that a vector a becomes minus a under an inversion, a vector b becomes minus b, but their cross product c doesn't change its sign. And this defines a quantity called a pseudo vector, where even if we flip all the axes, perform an inversion, a pseudo vector will not change its sign. Now, I just want to explore what happens if we take two different pseudo vectors, p and q, and we want to find out how their cross product behaves under an inversion. So here we have just the original coordinate system, a pseudo vector p and a pseudo vector q, their cross product I've called r. Let's perform the inversion. So we're now in the inverted coordinate system. The pseudo vector p doesn't change its sign, so it stays the same. The pseudo vector q doesn't change its sign, so it stays the same. So it's exactly the same result whether we have an inversion or no inversion. Therefore, the cross product of a pseudo vector and a pseudo vector is also a pseudo vector. The question also wants us to write down two pseudo vector quantities that we find in classical mechanics. So the first one is angular momentum L, which is equal to the position vector R cross the momentum vector P. The second one is torque, usually denoted by an N. And this is equal to the position vector R cross with the force vector F. So this is torque. The last part of part C, you might be wondering why I define this vector A here. I just want to explore what happens when we take the cross product of a vector and a pseudo vector and perform an inversion. So let's say we have in the original coordinate system, a vector A cross with one of these pseudo vectors, P. And then we perform the inversion. We are now in our inverted coordinate system. The vector A goes to minus A, just like we said before. So we have minus A cross with P is a pseudo vector. It doesn't change sign. So this is just P. And this is equal to minus A cross P. As you can see, under an inversion, we have the negative of what we had in the original. So the cross product of a vector and a pseudo vector is, in fact, a vector. Not a pseudo vector.
Part D of this question wants us to determine what happens to the scalar triple product for vectors a, b and c under an inversion of coordinates. <clears throat> so the scalar triple product in the original coordinate system can be written as the vector a dotted with the cross product of b and c. This is equal to a scalar, so let's call it x. So now we perform the inversion where all the coordinate axes are flipped. We found in part b that the vector a goes to minus a, the vector b goes to minus b, and the vector c goes to minus c. Now for the scalar triple product, we have the vector minus a just replacing these with their new transform quantities in turn, minus a dotted with minus b crossed with minus c. Now we actually found this result before in our discussion of pseudo vectors and found that it is just the same as b cross c. So our scalar triple product under an inversion becomes minus a dotted with b cross c and using our knowledge of dot products this is just the negative of A dotted with B cross C. So if the result of this was X, the result of this would be minus X. So therefore we can conclude that the scalar triple product changes sign under an inversion so that's question 1.10 complete and if you have any questions about anything I've done in this video please comment below thanks for watching